Hello everybody. May the good Lord bless you, guide and protect you in Jesus name. Amen. Wherever you are listening to me, I pray that God will meet you and settle you and help you meet all your needs in Jesus name. Are you sick? Almighty God will heal you. And everything you put your hand to do, God will do it for you. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Our topic today is, let go of the past. And we're going to learn how to change your focus and change your life. Our topic is, letting go of the past. Why do we hold on to the past? Why is it so difficult to let go of experiences that have caused us pain and suffering? Many of us get stuck in the past because of our need for certainty. Certainty is one of the six basic human needs and is fundamentally about survival. We all need to feel, feel certain that we can avoid pain and ideally find some comfort in our lives. Letting go of the past also means stepping into the unknown future. It means having the courage to let go of what is familiar, even if it is negative, and being vulnerable enough to embrace and learn from what's ahead. The other reason it's so difficult to learn how to let go of the past has to do with the way we link emotion to information. Consider, for example, a woman who has a feminine core. If a partner does something that causes her emotional pain, she may tend to bring it up over and over again throughout the relationship. Her partner feels like it's impossible to win because no matter how much he does to amend the situation, she continues to push him for his previous transgressions. Information with emotion makes an indelible impression. A person with a highly feminine, feminine core will attack emotion to anything that impacts them in a significant way, especially if it causes them pain or suffering, and it makes letting go of the past more difficult for them. Compare that to someone with a masculine core. A highly masculine person does care and feel things deeply. But masculine energy is about breaking through and letting go, while feminine energy is about filling up and gathering. When there is still emotion tied to a memory, moving on from the past becomes increasingly difficult for those who are biologically the same. What is this all causing us? All these things we are saying, how do we loosen our grip so we can move forward in a heavier, happier way? Start living a life full of more joy and freedom by learning how to move on from the past. This is why I'm going to list it down here to tell you about eight tips that will show you how to do things correctly. Listen to me, number one. Turn letting go of the past into a must. What do I mean? The first step is to acknowledge that acknowledge what it is holding you back and think about why you must move on what exactly are you holding on to a fair relationship a slight from a friend or family member that you just can't get over do you need to forgive someone either in person or just in your own heart so that you can let go of anger and step into a more peaceful state once you have identified what is holding you back Ask yourself, what are the reasons that I absolutely must move beyond this? How will your life change when you learn how to move on from the past? How will it change 
when you just learn that this relationship i will just go on with it and connect god to my partner and how will you feel in this new chapter of your life this is one of the most important parts of the process because it will help you stay committed to letting go of the past gaining a clear sense of purpose is essential to establishing any goal your purpose will serve as your emotional drive when you feel like giving up you are inevitable going to face setbacks and challenges but if you have a strong enough reason and a purpose that drives you you will stay focused and dedicated number 2 i wrote down is identify your emotional habits this is important this is one of the most challenging parts of letting go of the past because it requires deep introspection how do you live your life what are your limiting beliefs where do you live emotionally when you grow accustomed to certain emotions even negative ones you don't really notice how they impact you on a daily basis you don't realize that you are stuck in a negative emotional loop you just believe you are reacting as anyone would to any given situation but our unique emotional habits can have profound influence on the way we look at life the way we act and how good we are at moving on from the past so why settle for a life where we empower the negative emotions and disempower the positive identifying your emotional habits starts the shift towards a more a more positive experience your emotions are like a must a muscle you can train yourself to feel frustrated sad stressed or even depressed after a challenging situation arises or you can train yourself to feel passionate joyful and strong even when something bad happens in your life when you take charge of your emotions you can learn how to let go of the past in a way that makes you feel lighter and freer instead of fearful when you catch yourself falling into a negative emotional habit try to cut off the thought and switch gears immediately the more you condition yourself the more wired those emotions become and the more you adapt to any situation through a way number 3 here is condition your mind this is important the ultimate breakthroughs in life happen by learning strategies developing an empowering story and ensuring you are in the right state to move forward to do this you must condition your mind every single day if you don't take the time to examine and change your habits life just starts to happen to you instead of for you no matter how smart you are how safe you are or how inspired you are if you don't stand guide at the door of your mind then you are giving tactics approval of the this empowering this enchanting and this illusions instead of focusing on how to let go of the past you will find yourself distracted by thoughts that keep you rooted in negative patterns tell yourself empowering stories instead of limiting ones feed your mind with new knowledge and positivity read your bible surround yourself with people who make you better and put yourself in a peak state work on cultivating a thriving garden instead of a dry patch of weeds number 4 i wrote is create empowering rituals <laughs> letting go of the past isn't easy empowering rituals can help you cultivate that thriving garden There is a reason that the world's most successful people all establish daily routines that include things like a healthy breakfast, meditation, exercise and learning new things. It's the small rituals that you do every day. Ritual I mean 
is for you to do things that will make you happy, that will create happiness in your life, that build momentum and lead to massive change. Practicing gratitude is another habit that can help you live in the moment instead of the in the past. Start a gratitude journal or practice it during your morning meditation. Please take morning meditation very, very serious. Think about all that you have to be grateful for in your current life. Realize that everything that happened to you in the past is what made you the person you are now. A strong, powerful person can bounce back from anything. When you love yourself and your life, it's easier to let go of the past for good. Do you understand? God can refill your, your life back. Don't ignore Jesus Christ. Don't ignore God. Your Bible is important here. Number five I wrote here is focus on what you can control. So many people don't focus on what they can control. So much pain in life is caused by trying to control the way other people feel and act. We think that our circumstances are the result of some mysterious force when they are really the result of our own decisions. We have the ability to turn negativities into positives, setbacks into opportunities, failures into lessons. All we need to do is accept that the only thing we control in life is our own actions and decisions. You can't take back an unhealthy relationship, but you can learn from it. Yes, you can learn from your mistakes. Okay? You can learn from your mistakes. You can't go back in time and fix a bad childhood. But you can realize that as, as we always say, your past does not equal your future. Every day is a chance to start over. From the minute to wake up, you make choices. Learning how to let go of the past means breaking the pattern and focusing on creating the life you deserve, not dwelling on the one you used to have. Stop dwelling on your past, but you can learn from your past. Number six here is work on personal growth. This is important. There is no better time to work on a personal growth plan than when you want to learn how to move on from the past. Focusing on learning and improving is not only a distraction from negative thoughts, it's also empowering. Take this time to figure out what it means to you. Do you want to develop your career, create the healthy relationship you deserve? Once you have identified the areas you want to work on, pinpoint the obstacles you may face and assemble the tools you need to succeed. As you gather these tools, consider working with a coach during your personal growth journey. It can help you. Number seven is surround yourself with positive people. Mm, this, one, this one is very important. So many people make this mistake. Anybody they see, they say it's their friend. Everybody cannot be your friend. Choose your friend. Don't allow your friends to choose you. Rather, choose your friend. Surround yourself with positive people. Letting go of the past is much more difficult. If you are around people who are constantly reminding you about it, when you surround yourself with positive people who are committed to growth and progress, you will find it much easier to move on. You know, the quality of a person's life is most often a direct reflection of the expectations of their peer group. Put the theory of pure alleviation to work in your life and firmly establish yourself in the present. Always give. Give back. So many people are doing length this time. What is length? To my own understanding as length is this. The time to give. Give to the poor. Check your neighbor. Ask questions. Those who don't have food, you have surplus. Help them. Give them food. This is my own explanation of going into length and through there you enter into Easter. My own explanation of length. Fast. Give back. 
Lastly, as you strive to understand how to let go of the past, find something you want to serve that is greater than yourself. Serve God. Live for your family, for your community, for your community. Motivate those that matters. Okay? So find motives that go beyond yourself. Value people. Help people. No matter how broke you may be or how broken you feel, you have something to offer others. Even if it's something as common as a smile or a listening ear. Your life matters. And if you align yourself with the truth that you are here not to get but to give, then other people will feel your automatic authenticity and open up to you. Giving back reminds you what you are made for. Focusing on the needs of others has a way of empowering you to do more than you thought possible. You feel the benefits immediately and you will become grounded in the moment. You become more productive and you find creative solutions to problems. You find strength when you're exhausted and you will learn how to let go of the past and step forward into the future in a, a more loving, conscious and compassionate way. Not only in Christmas time you give, give to people at all times. And as Almighty God is saying this, He will help you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.